Hey guys, welcome back. Look at this. We got the Bamboo X1 Carbon. We got a lot of little projects going here. This is a, this is actually a HEPA filter for the back. I have a HEPA, HEPA Carbon slash filter back here right now, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Still messing with that one a little bit. So here's just a different version of it. It has uh, the little magnets in there that I've super glued in. Super glued is in last night, so I may swap that out today. And look. Of course, I've got some fun multicolor projects going here, and uh, those are epoxy coated. More, more on that stuff later. The AMS is awesome. It is amazing. The only trouble I had, I think I said this before, is I had to print this little lip because some of these spools, like my atomic filament spool, is taller than the rest and it rubs on the lid and it won't shut. So that's a workaround for that. I could always re-spool those, but I don't know, still still thinking about what I want to do long term there. Uh, the, the spools I get from, let me open it so you can see a little better. The spools I get from uh, Micro Center, I love these things. I, I think these are even called, these are more like MDF wood. I think they call them cardboard. Not really sure, but uh, a lot of people have problems with those. I don't have any problems with my AMS on those, uh, so that's working good. Uh, down here, I don't know if you can see, I just got a filament box trying to catch the, uh, the spent filament as we do color changes. Um, touch screen is awesome. There was my last print. That was that thing last night. I haven't done anything yet this morning. Um, and then here we go we have the internal if for those of you that haven't seen it and want to see it this is the chamber fan sucks air out for that filter all that good stuff and here's some of the filament i use uh this is black white red uh i just buy these at micro center they have a deal on them sometimes like i think this was like i don't know about 18.99 a box or so so pretty good deal and i can just walk down and pick whatever color i want and walk out um, I've done uh, some PGT printing with those, some stuff that's in my eBay store, uh, lots of stuff going on. Anyway, we won't get into all that now. I have it on an Ikea LAC table. I went ahead and printed some reinforcements. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's too dark. Uh, it, it's working for now. Uh, it's just out here in my office, and I want it to be close by so I can learn everything about it, and I have to run up and down the stairs in the basement. First impressions is this thing is so smart. It is incredibly smart. The LiDAR, all that, but sometimes it can be so dumb at the same time. Kind of like humans. <laughs> so one day I, I had an error saying the LiDAR was, the camera was dirty, clean it off, and it ended up being just a piece of filament stuck on the hot end that was uh, interfering, just kind of flapping in front of the, the LiDAR camera. So I just pulled that off and, and said uh, ignore and everything went on as normal. So just, uh, you know, just little things like that, but it, it is so smart and so fast. I love this thing. Uh, it's probably one of the best, it is definitely the best 3D printer I've ever owned, um, worth the money. Uh, some of the mods I did, I did the, uh, what was it, Ed J's? Uh, mod so I can use a spool holder back there uh, without disconnecting everything that works really well I did some TPU on that uh, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest I, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna use this for TPU much I'm gonna use one of my bed slingers for that uh, I, I've got some TPU things to print I want to print uh, a riser for the AMS I want to print some molds of TPU I'm gonna try some different things uh, but I'm still gonna use the bed slingers for that this one just prints so much better for you know everything else I'll call it so well real quick guys let's just take a look at a couple things that I've printed uh, number one is this utility knife out of PETG how did that thing get so bloody uh, here's one out of PLA this one turned out good I had a little bed adhesion problem right there uh, but man the quality the quality looks really good on these uh, let me get into some stuff that uh, sorry you're gonna hear some plastic here is uh, some stuff I sell in the eBay store. These are PETG, and uh, sorry, I don't know what's acting up with my desktop camera, but it looks a little funky today. Um, that that is one uh, that we we sell, and these are I don't want to get into what these are, but these printed great. Um, the quality on that's pretty good. Uh, we've printed so many other things, uh, paper trays. 
uh, you name it. Let me let me grab some parts of that. I think I showed you the uh, the filters and stuff I printed at least in one of the videos. I can't remember where all that stuff comes out to. Uh, I'm really been releasing a lot of videos lately. Uh, these the quality on these hanger parts or leg parts of these paper trays just these are amazing and the paper trays themselves. Uh, these are amazing. These are something that, to be assembled yet, but you can tell. Oops, sorry, sorry for the noise. You can tell that these really, uh, the quality on these turned out well. Um, what do I think about the printing? Uh, it's awesome, man. That thing is awesome. Auto bed leveling. I came from an Ender 3, a stock Ender 3, uh, probably V1. Um, and it's like, um, it's like going from a Yugo to a Tesla probably, right? When you think of the technology difference, it's amazing. Well, anyway, let's get back to the printer. And the stock, uh, spring steel, uh, plate, whatever you want to call it, has two sides. It's got one side for, uh, PTG, ABS, etc., TPU, one side for PLA. Uh, so that's really cool. It comes with extra PLA stickers, uh, extra, um, oh, what do you call it? PTFE tubes, all that. I was able to do the mod with that one. So I love everything about this, man. Uh, I can print directly from here, from the touch screen if I want, with uh, the files I put on the SD card or my last print. And like you can choose internal. This is the stuff that came with it. Uh, and then you have your micro SD card. The orange uh, stuff is what I printed in PD PTG. Uh, there is a cache that's nothing showing up. So, uh, you know, lots of little tools and things it came with. Uh, a scraper, such uh, this organizer, which I printed. And this is the razor scraper. So pretty cool little things. You can set up your AMS and filament here. Uh, you can't do this when it's running, uh, so I've, I've since swapped that out with PLA Plus. I wanted to see if there was an option for that. Uh, it doesn't look like there is, so I'm just going to leave it at uh, generic PLA. Now I can go in and adjust the uh, temperatures um, and such with that, so I can just click return and be right back but this is where we can mess with our AMS and and what we can do is if we want to use our our external spool which you can see I have on TPU I can just unload whatever's in there like select this slot select unload it's already unloaded so it won't let me do it now and then load in my TPU uh, so you have to disable the AMS when you're using the adapter because uh, Otherwise, it wants to go through and, and load and unload stuff. So that's just a checkbox when you go to print. So pretty easy stuff. Again, love this thing. Not going to ramble on much more about it. Uh, I want to talk about Bamboo Labs a little bit more now. Or, or the Bamboo Studio, sorry. The one that, uh, that we run on Linux. Because I run that on Linux now. And there's not an official release. But we made it work. Okay, guys. Getting into Bamboo Studio a little bit. I'm going to turn my mic down. I think it was a little loud last time. Um, you can see that I am running Linux Mint from my desktop share, which there's no supported version to run on Linux, actually. So since i switching from Mac to Linux, look at that whole series. Um, and it's been over a year now. I, I If it doesn't run on Linux, I'm probably not going to run it. So what I have in here is an app image for Bamboo Studio. And now you have to make these executable. You can run them, all that good stuff. I'll try to link a video to where you guys can see uh, app images and how I install them. But let's go ahead. What we'll do is we'll just double click it. And it's probably going to pop up on my other screen. So let's uh, give that a minute to come up. I'll drag it over. So we can all see it. Um, we can uh, basically just drag our items here that we want to print. Um, here's our PLA and our AMS. Um, I, I only have those three loaded right now. Uh, it, I will just do a single color if I'm going to go to the PETG, which is the orange stuff over there. So what's nice about this is you can put it in. You can do your multi-filament. So if you go to like preview, uh, you know what? Let me just find something to dump in here real quick. Okay, guys, so I think I found something we can drag in and show you, like, how I did the uh, the multicolor print, right? So let's pull this file in. I just drag it over like that. And then um, we can go over here to preview, 
And what we can do to do it in a multicolor is we can come up to the top uh, with, or come up to about uh, a little way and then do change filament and we can change a color. And then we can run that for a little way. And then I like to go in, change it again, change it back. And that's kind of how I came up with uh, this. But you get the idea. You just set the filament co color at different levels. Um, let's do one more, even though it's not, because, you know, you get the idea. So then we can go ahead and we can slice that. And, uh, and then we need to bring this all the way to the bottom to, to get the view of it. But there you can see how, that's how we added our multicolor. And this is some kind of purge strip back here that it automatically makes. But I just thought it was kind of cool. You know, those types of things we can do. Uh, you, you should choose what plate you're going to use. Uh, I use the, the PLA cool plate for my PLAs and then the engineering plate for, you know, PTG, TPU, ABS, all that stuff, right? So, so what we do is we just, we go ahead and, and we, uh, or we can select our strength and everything over here. It's, it's kind of, you know, you'll figure that part out. It gives you an estimated time. It takes about 23 minutes to print this multicolor. And then you just click print plate and it will bring up a little window and you can send it straight to your printer. You want to make sure you have your AMS enabled on these because you're going through these different slots in your AMS. And you also need to make sure before you even do that, that you go ahead and set up your filaments under here and what slot they're in your AO and number, uh, number, number one filament, which is actually slot three. I know it's going to be confusing. Um, and then my green filament, which is slot two and my blue filament, which is slot one. Anyway, you set that up and then you can go ahead and do these multi prints and send it straight to your print. But it's, it's pretty intuitive. Um, I can go over here to device. Uh, I can look at my micro SD card and I can see a bunch of time lapses that I, that I did and I can download them right here. Right. And, uh, of, of just so many things I put I think I put 128 gig SD card in there so I could get some time lapses and and load them in I'm still not that familiar with the settings on the time lapse so I'm still messing with that that's why I think I shared one in this video and it just didn't didn't fill the screen I probably get the resolution wrong or something but anyway love this printer love this printer you're going to hear that a lot in this video um, I think I'll, I'll close this out by just doing a final comments and, and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Well, hey, guys. Sorry the audio is going to be a little bit different on this right now. I've got some fans running and stuff in here. Cleaning that air. I just wanted to go over a couple things with it real quick on my uh, impressions of having this printer for a month. Uh, it's amazing. It's probably the, the best 3D printer I've ever owned. I don't regret the decision at all. Uh, if it is in your budget, I'll cut to the chase. Just go buy the thing because it is amazing. Uh, number one, speed. It prints so fast. So fast. It's crazy how thing this, how fast this thing prints. Uh, I have a friend that, that sent me an STL and said, hey, throw this in your slicer, see how long it takes. On my Ender, uh, he said, on my Ender S1 Pro, this takes, uh, you know, six some odd hours uh, to print. And I threw it in mine, it took about two. So, uh, you know, about two thirds faster, I guess that is. So amazing speed amazing quality is still great quality is great it's still 3d printer it's going to have some I, I think you saw in some of those examples in this video there's going to be a couple things here and there uh most of that is my user error and and not being completely familiar with it yet and and not having all the the tweak knowledge that i need to have to get that going so we'll, we'll get there though we'll get there and i'll keep updating as i learn new things right i mean i finally learned how to turn the chamber fan on in pla or at least a short about that. Uh, there's also G-code I found out I can add to it. I may do that one day too, make a video about that. Because uh, that is one of the downsides. Let's get to that one real quick, is the smell. Uh, the smell is much higher than any of my old 3D printers, my bed slingers. Uh, PLA even, just, it kind of stinks. Uh, it not including, you know, even PETG, not even talking about that. That, that really stinks, so. But I created all these filters uh, and such. I found a printables. Uh, HEPA filters and you add a little activated carbon and all this stuff and maybe I'll do some full videos on on making those with this but uh, Man that just cleared that right up. So really the only downside was really the smell and we've already solved that problem. So awesome uh, AMS is awesome this multicolor printing. I've 
so new to this, and I know you guys are like, wow, this has been around forever, you know, why don't you just pause and change? I don't have to now. It's just amazing. It's not such a pain. It just does it on its own. Now, I guess the downside of that is it does use a little more filament, and I put that box back there I think I showed you earlier, and it catches all the, the cast off of purging that when it changes colors, but man, what, a, what an amazing feat. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, but really, yeah, I mean, the technology, the LiDAR, all those other things, it can be a pain sometimes, but it's so much better than doing it by yourself. Like, I think my LiDAR got hung up once with a piece of filament stuck to the end of the nozzle. Uh, it kept interfering with the LiDAR camera, and, and it was the, the touch screen was screaming at me, clean your LiDAR camera, something's wrong. I reach in, pull the piece of filament off, and restart and everything's fine so simple problems I've had so far nothing big I'll keep updating as we go along like I said I'm a little over a month into this as I'm, I'm making this uh, outro right now so guys if it's in your budget get it that's all we have for today I've been talking too much one of my longer videos I'm sorry thanks for sticking around like subscribe all that good stuff I appreciate you and we will see you next time